uh, Insurance Nerds Attachment News Roundtable. And uh, just excited to have John Bachman on here. We were rapping for a couple minutes before the pod. We have actually never spoken. Uh, maybe exchanged a few LinkedIn messages. But we've lived in separate hemispheres. You can only have so many you know, taller people, brown hair, and facial hair in a room. So we, we just give each other space. But we finally decided to come together. And we just, yeah. <laughs> we're both Celtics fans, so that makes it easier, too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I'm allowed to be a Celtics fan yeah. <laughs> because of where I'm from. You, on the other hand, you take a big risk mentioning that. I just like stirring up controversy. Then it's really funny when you go to the Staples Center for Lakers or Clippers and your Celtics stuff, and the Celtics guy's like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just high fives in the aisle. Well, just yeah. imagine uh, Paul Pierce, man. He, he oh, yeah. was a Lakers fan growing up. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. The man, the myth. Um, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, thanks for coming on. I did warn John. I threw out a bigger question. I only had one question in my my deep preparation for today. Um, you know, what don't brokers and agents know that you feel we should? Because John, like, correct me if I'm wrong. So your background, yeah, coaching, and then claims for a number of years, and then surveys, which I would have to imagine is the interaction of, you know, ourselves with insurance, its customers, its feedback. Is that what the newer companies doing? So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So just as a little background, and may, maybe it's bring you up to speed as well, uh, Brett, about me. So yeah, 2002, I was working for the UMass women's basketball team. Um, not a coach at that point, but that was my plan. Yeah. Uh, the head coach, she got non-renewed. Mm. So um, I realized there was no stability in college sports, even though my plan was to be a D1 assistant coach mm -hmm. and have a radio show on the side. That didn't come through. So fell in insurance and fell into a claims organization and spent almost 20 years on the claim side of things. And, and um, yeah, everything from handling uh, claims on the front end as an adjuster to leading teams. And then um, uh, I got involved a ton into customer experience projects, mm -hmm. leading projects, survey projects within both carriers I worked for. And then uh, when I came across uh, social survey, we met at a conference I was speaking mm -hmm. at. Um, we met up and it was like a perfect marriage. Um, That's cool. But yeah, social survey does a, a lot around um, customer engagement, um, customer feedback, and then using that that engagement and that feedback as marketing automation. So very cool. So that's oh, interesting. Okay, so yeah. more the marketing side. That's cool. I was yeah, yeah. The claims. All right, very interesting. Um, yeah, and we were kind of talking about it ahead of time. You work so hard to sell a deal. You work so hard to set up the right policy. You want people to be protected, and then sometimes just things shake out differently. You know, it's a it's a tough job. You know, um, kind of riding millions of dollars of risk. Hopefully, every day. Don't do that every day. But, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I've enjoyed my time around it. And then yeah, John, we haven't got to catch up too much. But yeah, I've been able to help a fintech kind of come to the U.S. from Canada, or we're quietly working on it right now, which is really exciting. And then just doing the PNC at my buddy's benefits broker just keep me busy. So I got those two projects I'm working on, and it, it's fun. I don't feel like an expert in anything, but I have some business development experience, some tech understanding, some social media understanding. and It's fun to kind of populate the, the few together, you know good so far no, that's awesome man it, you, you have your hands in so many different things and that's why I, I love what you do here with the attachment deal as well uh the attachment point um because you're interacting with so many cool people out there man so it's a good excuse to bug people like yourself yeah uh john and i were joking before the calls like it's a good excuse to bug smart nice people and get you know you know grab for half an hour and pick their brain um yeah no it's, it's fun so, so I, I, I don't know if I'd call myself either one of those, especially my kids. They might not say I'm a nice guy either. <laughs> <laughs> no, no way, man. It's the best. Um, yeah. To kind of nerd out and go backwards on basketball a little bit, because I don't feel like I was the best either. What, what position did you play? What kind of player were you? Do you see similarities oh. between your basketball characteristics and your professional life? <laughs> oh, my God. I, I, was, I was a grinder, man. Same, if, yeah. if, you, if you could compare me me to anybody well I tried to be like him was a little bit like Dennis Rodman I guess where oh, wow. I tried uh, to my my main stat was rebounds and, yeah. and, and banging underneath I, I was not a scorer I was not a good player my sister was a hell of a, a ball player but I, I was never a great player I think that fits um, the claim side doing the dirty work kind of rolling up your sleeves getting things up. similar I would just try to slow down the best guard on the other team because I was kind of big and decently quick I was a facilitator I joke around that as a point forward before LeBron you know made it cool you know, um, but yeah, just bring the ball up, get to wing, set a pick, go back to the high post, facilitate. Well, that, 
that was a big thing. I talked to my old man after games yeah. and talk about uh, my great plays, which was a pick to free somebody open. Mm-hmm. That was my big play. It's huge. Grant Williams, <laughs> you know, knew his great Celtic, you know. But that's kind of what our job is. That's kind of what our industry is. It's, you know, it's the trenches. I worked at a, a church for three years. I've worked construction, like a lot of blocking and tackling, kind of just taking care of people, you know. Um, yeah, yeah. And I think you made a good point too, comparing claims uh, to like those grinders type of deal, yeah. because that's what it is. It's it, it, it's it's not the prettiest of jobs all the time, and sometimes it's it's some of the hardest work, mm-hmm. but it can be the most fulfilling in, in the end. Um, and I think it's what's all about, you know. If you're not delivering on a claim, like, what's the point of all the paper we're selling? You know, it's not. Right. I, I say that all the time. There's yeah. only one one thing you guys are selling is you're promising that the claims folks are going to do what you say they're going to do. Mm-hmm. And That's even it. in all this tech, we want good policies out there. Like I always champion the idea of guardrails. Like, if you're going to auto bind something, have certain limits. If they want to go below, make them reach out to the agent. We're not trying to put landmines out there. We're trying to put policies that'll work. Like, you know, we want to sleep at night as well. <laughs> you know? yeah. 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 It's a long game. This is definitely a farming industry. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. it absolutely is. It, and I think you, you kind of touched on it there as well of, you know what, what can agents do better? It, it's, it's the interaction with the claims folks. Yeah. Because you're you're selling what's in the policy you're reading the policy well the the good agents are reading the policy not not all of them are yeah Uh, but it's getting on the same page even before a policy is bound to Mm -hmm. to chat with your claims connections to say hey this is the way we're reading it and this is what we want to sign up is this how it's going to work if a claim comes through i've never gone all the way to the claims agent but early on even in personal lines i've been very impressed with how open up the underwriters are, how quickly you can get them on the phone, how much you can ask questions. So it's so weird, but some of the best customer service I've had in my life has been talking to underwriters and tar- talking to departments of insurance. <laughs> you know, oh. I think it, uh, You're a strange dude then. If, if no, they're nice. Department of insurance, man. <laughs> <laughs> I can't speak for all of them because I haven't had as direct interaction, but the California Department of Insurance is like surprisingly like responsive and cool. They'll call you back the next day, leave a voicemail, but they're helpful. Yeah. Not, hey, nothing wrong with that though. Yeah. But but I will say, even it, it's awesome that you've had great experiences yeah. <laughs> with the underwriters yeah. um, as well. Because even within carriers, there's some disconnect between oh, underwriters oh. and claims folks, where they're not talking as much as they should be. Mm-hmm. Um, the last carrier I worked for, we did we interacted a ton. Um, but my prior yeah. carrier to that, and and other ones I've spoken to, it's it's like they're two different worlds. Um, so I, I always prefer to say, you know what, the agent who's selling it and the claims person that's going to be that claim, those are the people that should be together. Well, it makes sense because you're promising those monies will be there and they get to make And we froze up. If the money will link up, you know. It's all good. We're frozen for a moment. I'm going to hit pause. We'll come back. All right, so hopefully we've dubbed in like a Snickers commercial or another way to make some extra money off this. We had a momentary freeze. Always satisfied. So I've never actually talked to a claims person, um, but so but I haven't sold a ton, candidly. I mean, a lot of small business, a lot of ugly ducklings, still passing some personal lines off to a buddy. Um, in my mind, I wish I had a whiteboard right now. You have the customer, you have the agent saying, these monies will be here if X, Y, and Z happens. You have the underwriter saying, we'll accept this risk. And then you have the claims person determining if the monies can be released for the need that you're promising here, it makes sense, you know, that you kind of go through like, Hey, I'm telling this person X, will you give X if it's needed to be deployed? You know? Yeah. And I will say some of the best conversations I had about if something's going to be covered is when an agent has reached out to me directly. Mm -hmm. And basically it was like phone a friend saying, I have this crazy, uh, Oh no, this, Damn connection. No, no, um, you're, you're coming in clean over here. <laughs> all right, all right. So um, the uh, the best conversations I'd have yeah. about coverage, it, whether things are going to be covered or not, is when agent friends reached mm-hmm. out to me, kind of like a phone a friend, and we just talked it through where, where hey, this insured, this is what they want yeah. to be covered for, this is the, the, the risk we're talking about. How does a policy language come into play? Would you pay this if this happened? Or if this scenario popped up? And I know it's always tough to talk about hypotheticals. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. And, and, and most claims people, are, are they like to avoid yeah. hypotheticals. They want to be able to investigate it. 
But if you have a certain exactly what's going to happen and this is what the policy says about it, you're golden. The so, customer's going to feel so much better about it. Totally. And I was just wondering, this is cool because I've never done this. As an agent broker, I've never talked to a claims person. This could be like a playbook for somebody out in the field who cares about their job, wants to do it right. Um, yeah. What they call you say, hey, John, like I'm working on this. Like I'm not going to quote you exactly. I don't need anything in paper, in writing. But from your professional opinion, does this make sense to have this type of policy in force for this potential risk? Or is it something a little bit more... No, it absolutely is. And, and normally the, the best conversations are where they already looked at the policy and said, okay. I'm looking at this clause here and this is the way I'm interpreting it. Is this how you would mm -hmm. have? And then it could be yes, no, or hey, you know what? No, check over here in one dot C. It, this is what would apply uh, in that s scenario. Those conversations where you're both digging into the policy would you would you be okay with a paper trail or would you prefer to be just more of a conversation or oh it's either? still a, a a conversation but yeah and usually hey it depends upon which policy yeah uh, if it's an iso form if it's some other form it's a manuscript policy um but just trying to get a gist of yeah really the language they're looking at versus the language i would be looking at okay no, that's cool. Like find a spot. And then that's where you get some cool, like risk genius with Chris Cheatham. <laughs> yeah. So machine read through and find, you know, that clause and four different types of policies and, you know, compare and make sure you're in the right spot. Well, uh, that, that's a big thing too is, yeah, it's all fine and good when, if I'm always looking at the same ISO policy yep. and that's what we're talking about. But uh, like Bill Wilson says, it, it's not a commodity. Yeah. Not all policies are created equal, man. So. Oh, totally. Um, and then now, I mean, the whole new world of like simplified policies a little bit and kind of trying to make things readable, but then super broad and that's okay when it's a new risk like cyber and there aren't many claims yet, but you know, down, well, down the, the road. The bad thing that's go going to happen with that is the lawyers get involved. And, and mm -hmm. that's why the policy is so complicated now. It's because of um, the insurance company had this idea of why it's going to be covered. And then the attorneys come in and they, they're trying to get covered for their clients. They're doing their job. And, and that's why it has to be a lot more complicated. That's, that's funny. So we look at like the long insurance policy as a negative, but it's just buffering out attorneys the best it can. <laughs> well, not even buffering. It, it's tried to say, right. this is the reason we had the policy in place. It yeah. wasn't for all these other reasons. Yeah. But so that's why it gets so crazy. I, I get nervous for those companies that are releasing the, what's it, the three page policy and yeah. stuff. Yeah. It, it's going to end up being in courts. Um, it, as soon it's as not, it's just releasing something that helps them get a lot of clients quick so they can sell the company later. That's all they're doing. <laughs> no, just kidding. Maybe, maybe not. It's um, to bring in the DCs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Look at our growth. Don't pay attention to the policies. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's funny. Yeah, and I'm newer. I mean, candidly, I got licensed in 2014. Wasn't full-time in like 2017, um, but was around a fintech startup before. And I used to sell office moves, so insurance is actually really exciting for me. You know, oh, comparatively wow. to office moves, it's like office moves without having to keep track of labor. <laughs> There's still a lot of paper, you know, involved and some risk, but yeah. uh, it's funny. So full office moves is is, is yep. like full relocation. And yeah, wow. I, I grew up around it. The most random thing in the world as a kid too. People are like, what's your dad do? Sells office relocation logistics. What? Well, one in 10 companies, you know, grows or shrinks or has to move it in a given year and he bids it, you know, sets it up. So yeah, I've seen the inside of all sorts of companies and buildings, and even we're a Mayflower agent, people's homes. So it's pretty cool when I'm cold calling to be like, okay, I know what this machine shop probably looks like. I know what this distribution center probably looks like. I know what this retail agency probably looks like. And you kind of have an eye for like, yeah, these guys are gonna have old furniture and be a cheaper industry. These guys are gonna be trying to impress everybody. You have to class it up. And really in your mind's eye, I think who you're talking to, you know, it's pretty fun, you know. And I've ran projects everywhere from San Diego to Ventura County, you know, and San Bernardino. So like I've literally been boots on the ground throughout Southern California. So that's great. We, we could have a relo uh, discussion sometime because uh, one of the uh, types of claims I oversaw at mm. one of the carriers oh. I worked for, um, we did all the relocations of their employees because it was a huge company that yeah. sent their employees all over the world we ensured the relocation of their uh, resident, uh, residential properties. So. That's cool. No, totally. Um, it was a weird, good industry to learn from. And it was like, hit the bricks kid, like go figure out how to sell office moves in downtown LA, no real training. 
Um, you know, my copier sales job was like, here's some business cards off somebody's desk who's sick today. Here's a one page script. So I've always had to build stuff up from like nothing. <laughs> so the entrepreneurial yeah. little startup stuff doesn't scare me too bad because I've just been around quirky small businesses where there wasn't much infrastructure anyways. Just yeah. right. <laughs> some ringer cowboy you're trying to pay attention to to be like, okay, how'd they do it? What was the circumstances? How do they break in? You know. Um, yeah, I've classically been around small business. So it's funny to hang out with friends who work at you know, like these like global companies. Yeah. Right, right. It's a different animal. Yeah. But there's no excuses these days either. You can find YouTube videos about whatever, you can buy books on whatever, like really whatever you want to learn, it's at your fingertips, you know. So Hell I yeah. I, yeah. I, I, I was, uh, I gave a presentation at um, uh, an event this, this past mm -hmm. weekend. And one of the pieces that they wanted incorporated was, could you build an Instagram post from scratch? And, and, and one of the things is make it simple. Don't use design software. All yeah. this. So I built it in PowerPoint. And what did I do to figure out the sizing? I Googled it in yeah. front of the class. I forgot, hey, let, let's figure out what the size is. Mm -hmm. And we did it right there and, and pulled up the YouTube of the best way to do it too. Yeah. No, totally. Squarespace, all that stuff. I mean, it's right there. I'm lucky. Uh, a guy named Justin Goodman built out a program called Total CSR, and he kind of stuck me a little access code to that. So I even have some CSR training I need to get back on. You know, <laughs> it's out there though. There's no real excuse these days. Um, anything, anything you want to learn about is yeah. out there. You can figure it out. Totally. So, so social survey is more of an interaction base. It's more user experience and making sure people enjoy working with a given company or. Is all insurance companies? Uh, no, so it's, it's agnostic. Uh, oh, we're wow. fairly new in the insurance space. We grew up in real estate and mortgage. That's where our founders came from. Okay. Um, but basically, let's think about it in an agency like yourself. It's okay. um, any kind of transaction we can attach a, a survey to. So okay. if you, you buy a new policy, let's use that as a transaction. Mm -hmm. it, it triggers our system to send a survey to the customer. As they fill out the survey, we then separate the happy from the unhappy. Mm -hmm unhappy people we get them back to you so you can fix the problem and turn them into a happy customer um, and we have those complaint resolution workflows and then the happy people we basically blast it all over the internet oh cool uh, we get it up on your website we get it up on our public facing profile pages mm -hmm. we get it on social media and we can do it for the agent we can do it for the local office we can do it for the agency overall so yeah. that comment is shared all over the internet like multiple times and then finally, we push uh, those people over to Google My Business, Better mm -hmm. Business Bureau, Yelp, all the third-party review sites too. Cool. So it makes sense. Um, it's funny and kind of hop in the weeds. So you have like your one to 10, consider people happy like eight to 10. Everyone's hoping to get nothing but 10 out of 10s and then that limbo. And then you can, you'll want to fix your one to fives and people can set up their own parameter. Yeah, yeah. So it, it our our platform. People talk about um, their software as, as being white label, but yeah. what they mean is slap a logo on it. Yep. What we mean by white label is we build it how you want it. So That's cool. We yeah. have the throttles and controls behind the scenes that, it, however you decide what that happy customer is, yeah. if it's equates to a four and a half star and that's it that's that's what we auto post for if it's lower we we work on it there and and so many other <laughs> controls whether it be the reply to reviews who can reply to review yeah. yeah no there's a ton there and i mean i've even you know worked at restaurants and stuff where i was taken so serious that the gm of the whole restaurant was the one who responded to the yelp you know answers because it's it matters these days you know like yeah. those quick searches you know look up your top 10 list for x y and z you know meeting up with a buddy today you know using top 10 lists yeah well that that's again going back to the presentation from this past weekend is uh, referral business R referral business is not mm -hmm. is not going away yeah mm -hmm. uh, and anybody saying that it's gone is lying to you yeah. um, or they're selling you something right uh, referral business is huge but it's it's evolved from what it used to be referrals back in the day was hey you should uh, write your insurance with brett yeah. i'm gonna do it now Write write your insurance with Brett, and I look him up right away just to mm -hmm. check out his reviews. That's and um, reviews are so important. Uh, Bright Local they did a study in 2018 mm -hmm. that said 80 84 percent of Americans trust online reviews as much as word of mouth referrals. Yep, I would 84 percent that true. I look at it almost like a person. Yeah, you know, yeah. I don't look at it. Yeah, now that I think about it, I've never thought of it that way. But if a friend tells me something over the internet. 
Because in a way, hasn't the internet become a friend? You know, in a way. Yeah, really it's <laughs> our friend, word. our enemy, our livelihood, our. <laughs> yeah. It's been a little weird. No, yeah, it, weird. and that's where we're going for our info. Yeah. I, I think about it, and it's not just insurance; it's everything yeah. that we're buying. You go online; that's where you go to check it out. So mm -hmm. you just got to make sure that your reputation is what you want it to be, and and mm -hmm. you have to control it. If if you're not doing it, like we say, your unhappy customers are doing it. Those are the people yeah. sharing their stories. I think you can still catch up. I was telling Hanley this. I didn't think LinkedIn had a huge purpose four or five, six years ago, but I saw value in doing it well early because I thought it would have purpose over time. And then I swear, for some reason, the past year to two years, it like something clicked. I don't know what they did, whether it's articles, you know, algorithms, whatever, but I think it, it hit its legs like two year to, you know, year to two ago. So well, it, it depends on who yeah, your audience yeah. is too. It, where me, yeah, obviously, yeah. that's my number one uh, social media platform because mm -hmm. I'm I'm going B two B, and so that's where the business people are. They're they're on LinkedIn. Where if I was purely selling auto insurance, hey, maybe it's I don't know Facebook. Yeah. Maybe maybe it's TikTok these days. I don't know. I, I had to move out of personal lines because Facebook or because uh, the 2016 election scared me off of Facebook. You know, just yeah. in general. So. You have to be done with personal ads. Can't can't play there anymore. Well, speaking of Hanley, he's got his article about the 2020 elections and how oh, to prepare for it too. So it gets so weird. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I'm gonna leave it neutral like that. This is gonna be weird. But yes. you know what? We will ensure things from here and there. We'll help out. Um, I'm trying to think of anything else. Want to bug out while I have you? Your video was really good the other day about claims early on and the first one that really mattered and oh, taking care thanks, of the man. lady. It's it's gnarly. I don't know. Um, Money no, is not the answer, but it's helpful when there's a lot going on. It's nice not to have that worry, you know. Yeah, and kind of a great result out of that video too, which which I had I had a lot of fun with that one, like I do all the videos. Yeah. Um, but other people have been reaching out and, and telling me their story of when it oh, mattered wow. most to them, and it um, some good. I'm trying to think of uh, Doug Brode. He he reached out and talked about a, a great. Uh, well, it wasn't a great experience experience but yeah. it it showed how much that he impacted the life of of one gentleman mm -hmm. in their family and and hearing those stories and people have uh joked around saying hey i'm the claims guy on, on the internet and it's only because i'm the only person out here talking about it from mm -hmm. the claims angle or one of the few yeah there's I, one guy who had the classes or whatever for a little bit he's a really nice guy uh, i'm sorry there's one guy who had like claims or uh, classes about being an adjuster for a little bit oh, Chris too. Stanley? That's the only other guy I can think of off the top of my head. Yeah, Chris that. Stanley too. And then there, there's a few others out there like Adam Painter. He does a, a, a podcast about it. And um, um, oh God, I can't think of his name right now. And I feel awful. Matthew, uh, I think it's Matthew Allen. He does Adjuster mm -hmm. TV, but there's so few. And yeah. I, I think if there were more people telling those types of stories, um, Clems will get a better reputation about mm -hmm. being a, a, a career destination because I, I talk about it to younger people and uh, like the Gamma Iota Sigma kids. Yeah. I shouldn't call them kids. Gamma Iota uh, Sigma students. Yeah. Uh, hell, they're smarter than me. I can't call them kids. Uh, <laughs> I hear you though. It's uh, funny when people who aren't that young just seem a lot younger because you're just getting, <laughs> I'm 34, you know, like 21 year olds seem. You know, well, man, I'm, get, I'm getting old 30. fast. I, I'm 40 <laughs> in a couple of months, man. So yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'll tell you, I, I, st I still think of myself as a young guy in the room, yeah. but I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> I'm saying likewise. Um, no, but claims is huge. So I've been helping out Fineo and their, their mission to create a simplified platform for term critical illness and disability insurance. And I never thought about, you know, financial planning is like a real big backstop. And if somebody goes through a critical health event or whatever else, having those resources there to bridge the gap, you know, um, I'm so used to PNC, you know, assets and liabilities. It's been pretty interesting. And I look at PNC as like putting back together and I think claims and I think that financial planning side is almost more of a bridge to normalcy. Yeah. You know, and it's just interesting to look at the whole risk that a person has, you know, and I'm really happy to be getting that exposure, you know? Yeah. It, it, and I think that's a great example though, too, of calling it a bridge. And I, I don't think it has to be just the financial planning. I think it's the PNC side, mm -hmm. uh, health and life too, it, where that's really, it's a, it's a bridge to normalcy. I'm I'm gonna steal that, man. That's, that's awesome. <laughs> it really is. It, you you have something terrible happen yeah. on whatever side of the business it is, and 
how can those claims folks and how can the insurance professionals get that customer as close to normal? As, yeah, as just to write, you know, and also to ease them through the process. Like it was a fairly, you know, it was a big trauma you'd mentioned with that lady and it may not get to status quo again, but helping them meet the new normal and being there to sort of get them over. Yeah. I worked at a church kind of by accident from 18 to 21 and it was pretty gnarly. I mean, there's, like a student passed away, had to deal with a couple other people passing away. And you see yourself as like somebody who gets to help just shepherd through the gray times, you know, and it's interesting, but claims you're kind of representing a company and doing something similar and helping yeah. monetarily. It's, that's a trip. I mean, it's a responsibility. It, 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 I'll, I'll tell you, it's not for everybody too, yeah. Yeah, because I, I've had some um, people that I work with and on my teams where it, 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 it weared on it, man, because yeah. it, everybody you talk to, it's something negative happening. And, I, I was lucky enough where I could, uh, I don't know, compartmentalize. Yeah, I guess or frame it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where other people, man, they they take that burden on themselves and, and they put it on their shoulders. And after every call or yeah. every inspection, that can wear on you, man. And and so but I appreciate the work they're doing. And you know, kind of started yeah. talking about what agents and brokers should know. There's people on the other side of it that are helping carry what we're promising. You know, and it's a shared experience and they don't want to deny stuff either so if we're doing our best to understand what we'll be approved what we'll be denied what we're selling yeah yeah that's it people yeah. people always had that misconception too of claims is always trying to save the company money they're always looking yeah. to deny it i'll i'll tell you at least in my uh yeah. my history it's where in the policy can we find the coverage no yeah. matter what even if we know it's not covered we still try to pull out the policy and find out can we sneak it in over here can we find it that's cool. I'm always trying to find it. Yeah. Well, we're humans, you know, and uh, there's, <laughs> there's a rep reciprocity, there's reflection, you know, that's cool, man. That's yeah, good to hear. Yeah, if you're not in this business to help other people out, <laughs> man, you're, you're in the wrong business. Go, go do something else. You don't belong in insurance if you're not looking to help out others. I always joke, I've been a little bit more on the sales side, but um, like there's very few industries where I can make a really good living and really generally help people. You know, I really can't think of many others that like there's a share, you know, there's an upside for the person you're selling to. And you know, at the end of the day, it can be pretty cool too, you know? Yeah, no, I agree with you. It, it's it's very rare. Yeah, no, it's fun. I mean, yeah, so I got into insurance trying to insure the buildings and the office space before the project so I could know where the deals are going to go. And a friend had mentioned insurance was a good industry and then it just looked better overall. And uh, Super random, but my dad was maybe going to buy the moving company, but when that didn't look like it was happening, I hopped out in insurance. And nice. it's phenomenal, you know. So. Yeah, me. I, the only reason I got into insurance is I was a buddy of mine said try to get in the mail room at this oh, wow. insurance company, and it was just to extend my summer a little bit more. And yeah. un, unfortunately, I ended up as a temp in in the claims department, oh, wow. and, and the rest is history, man. Yeah. that's cool dude uh, but i appreciate you taking the time today i'm excited to check out social survey a little more i didn't realize it was you know so broad i was just thinking it was insurance vertical focus so i'll try to kind of stir around a little bit and see who i think might be good candidates there but really good to finally wrap with you on here appreciate i know it. It, it's still crazy to think yeah. we we interact so much with <laughs> each other's work yeah. and, and whatnot but we never actually interacted so next step is yeah. in real life too I like it, man. Definitely. But thanks for coming on, John. We'll, uh, we'll catch you guys soon. Appreciate it. And you know what I appreciate before we hang up to? Oh, yeah, yeah. You no didn't worries. bring up the Patriots and the Buffalo Bills this week. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, wait. No, no. All right, we'll, we'll stop there. We'll stop there. We'll honor that. That's funny. I'll have to circle back with Hanley for that one. But uh, yeah. no, thanks for coming on, John, and definitely catch you soon. I appreciate it, man. All right, brother.